Hi, my name is Eric Waters, director of Superman Unplugged. Actually, Superman was my first trip to the movie theater, 1978, and I was just blown away. Everyone stand back, please stand back. It's all right, nothing to get worried about. As a child, I was so intrigued that a man can fly. My mom had to sit there time and time again and tell me, he's not really flying, he's not really flying. And nothing she could tell me would make me believe that he wasn't really flying. I knew ever since graduating high school that I wanted to come to California. About a year and a half, two years ago, I just woke up and said to myself, I've done all I can do here in Philadelphia. It's time for me to go move on and pursue my dreams. Action! Columbia College had like a saying, making a film is not a privilege. That's something that you have to do. I wanted to be at a place where it was a lot of hands-on. The more hands-on you get the better you get at your trade. And I came out here for about a week. I met a couple guys from the school and I just got involved. I, I wanted to be at the school. My passion was not just about the LA life, but to come here and really pursue what it was that I wanted to do for so many years. Hello, I'm Jeff Lewis, the director of photography on Superman Unplugged. Eric's love for the material was definitely a bonus. Eric lived and breathed Superman. Every single day he came to set in a Superman t-shirt. Superman goes deeper than just a fan base. I kind of see Superman in myself. I still kind of look up to him because we're heroes in our own way. You know, I knew he was a big Superman fan. He told me that he had this dream about bringing the Matrix and Superman and putting them together. I, like this Superman, am not from this place you call the real world. I think I, I had a dream one night about the two together and woke up one morning, five o'clock in the morning, and just started writing. It was like the story was already written in my mind. I guess it's that's got Smith's name written all over it. We're just gonna stand here, we're gonna... I think the biggest benefit about this film was that everybody loves Superman and everybody knows the Matrix. They both are considered supermen with different qualities. Here you have two supermen in two different places that's trying to accomplish the same thing. They're trying to protect their people. We are, it is, let's see, 8.03, we have an hour get out of here when it usually takes us about an hour and a half, two hours. But, because of Eric, I love Eric, I wanted to get this last, last shot in and we're all going to do a little extra hustling. So, it's crunch time. I'm a little nervous. It's a little over time. It costs me money. But, at the same time, I love it. So, let's go. Pretty much everything on this film was a challenge in one way or another. It's the biggest film I've ever shot. Getting the camera from Panavision was a major benefit allowing us to shoot Super 16. I mean, their, their technical crew was very helpful. It was a seven month production. And it's funny because when I first started, I thought to myself that this was something I could do in, you know, maybe a couple days. And I was thinking at the time about 1,500 to 2,000. Before I knew it, we was looking at somewhere around 30,000. As producers, our goal was to try to leave Eric with, you know, can I have him worry about anything? Just worry about his actors. And come in. You just come here. Stop here. I don't think most student productions would have been as prepared as this one was. We really made, you know, a million dollar feature film on a very, very small budget. We did have a lot of help from the school. Charlie Rose and Alan Gansberg, they looked through our budget, they looked through this, they looked through that, and, and keep us on our feet, keep us on our toes. It's based on a comic book, which is known for being, you know, strong colors, great visuals, everything's very dynamic and action-packed, so, you know, I wanted things just like kind of explode off the screen. As I was writing, I started thinking of different ways and different people that can help me get this vision across. By me being at the school for a couple years, I got to know some of the other students and find out their capabilities. Josh Shuler, he worked on a couple of my projects in the past, and I knew he was capable of doing the special effects. We're gonna, I think this is the uh, scene yeah. where Superman gets sacrificed and he's cut open with a kryptonite knife. Not only did we have to sell the fact that the characters was real, we also had to make them look as real as they had to look. Joe Jackson the third, 
handled costumes and I just want to say thumbs up to Joe because he did a hell of a job. This right here is uh, Agent Smith, you know, get them all pressed out nice and neat, you know, real dapper. When it was time to cast for Superman, I think we had over 600 headshots to come in. Sam Hargrave, he came in looking like Clark Kent. I knew from that first audition that he was going to be the man that I was going to cast. Uh, so my name is Sam Hargrave and I'm playing the part of uh, Clark Kent and uh, Superman. Yeah, right now, more Clark Kent than Superman. Jesse, who played Smith, walked in playing the character and his voice is what stood out to me. Well, well, well. Isn't the legendary Superman faster than a speeding bullet? More powerful than a locomotive, able to leap tall buildings in a single bound. Tim Storms, he was doing pieces with John Javolta and Hugh Jackman. He also worked on Spider-Man 2. I'm working with somebody that has been working with people that I'm dreaming about working with in the future. Let's say you can do the unthinkable and get rid of Superman. What's in it for you? Honestly, I felt as though we was in trouble the whole shoot. The fight scene had so many stunts and wire gags and just little camera tricks and stuff like that to make the fight scene more exciting. And each one of those took so much time to set up. And we had one day to do it. We had a few problems, just like any other production, you're always going to have problems. Our level of expertise was set so high, we set a standard that we had to meet every day. Yes, the infamous door incident. We had the breakaway door ready on set, and I kept looking over at this door that was set up, thinking, okay, I guess they're still working on it. And then finally, we had 20 minutes left in the day to shoot. At that point, I just kind of exploded. The fucking door sucks, I'm sorry! Pretty much finished out the rest of the day, and then we got the fantastic shot of Sam crashing through the wall. <laughs> What was probably, you know, just very stressful, frustrating moment turned into a very exciting moment at the end of the day. Everybody still came together and um, I honestly can't sit here and say that it was a time that I really felt as though the shoot wouldn't get done. I think we did pretty well. I think we pulled it off. My ultimate goal for this film is to get us recognition. Maybe that'll help the professional world see that students are ready too. You just gotta give them a chance. Got the big S on my chest, so I'm kinda gunning.